I have the YouTube set up. It's me. I'm me. We even got the green screen. I don't feel like I'm in shape. Some of that might just be body dysmorphia, but some of it is probably just, you know, the truth. Just uh, looking at me. I don't ever actually do formal exercise. I just count my seven to ten hours of work where I run around and do whatever as exercise and I go good enough for me and then I go to bed but in fairness I'm on my feet constantly I'm lifting annoyingly heavy boxes full of fluids and I have to do all of that while being swore from the previous day's shift it certainly feels like exercise just not in a gym like the bros but there's always a nagging thought in my brain that I should be engaging in more formal exercise doing sets or exercises that work out specific muscle groups Usually I can just brush these thoughts aside because uh, I'm a lazy person who doesn't want to do that. But on a whim, I said, why not try? My first thought was to get Apple One because I have an iPhone and therefore it is there. And I was going to do all the fitness stuff on that. But uh, it's $33 a month, which is more than I want to spend. Although in hindsight, it would have been cheaper than what I actually ended up doing. Instead of that, I bought Ring Fit Adventure. I just got the Switch version of Wii Fit and decided to spend a month exercising exclusively doing that. The goal here was to spend a month doing 30 minutes of ring fit every day. That goal lasted about a day. I very quickly realized my body cannot handle that much after working all day. Any leg exercise was a Herculean effort to just get my legs to bend. They aren't doing great, and they were not doing any better after exercise. In a perfect world, I probably could have done it, but realistically I think my legs would have given out and I uh, don't want that. Although, it would have been funny for the video had my legs given out, but um, I don't think that would have been fun for me as a human being. The main realization that my body was just weak came from when I tried the hardcore sets. If you don't play the main story of Ring Fit, there are pre-made sets or custom-made sets. Most days I just opted to do these because they were there and I have no desire to play the story. I just want to do exercise. The sets are divided into casual and hardcore. The casual ones are fine, as expected. They are casual. They're light exercise. I can do a bunch of them. But the hardcore ones are leagues different, usually just by adding degrees of magnitude more reps and then more exercises as well. Some of them were fine, but whenever I did the leg lifts, I felt my body trying to crush itself under my weight. So for most of them, I just did a singular hardcore set and said, this is good enough for me, I'm doing great, team. Objectively, this is me uh, lessening the challenge that I did. I don't care. This is an internet challenge. It's not meant to be me breaking my body playing a video game. And also, I still have to go to work the next day or several hours after I do all this, and I don't want to suffer. Because many of the days I did this were just after work where I wanted to just sleep and do nothing and barely could muster the energy to move. Because I do the job of like three to four different people, so uh, let me be tired. I'm pushing myself to just do this, and uh, I still did it for at least a bit. But speaking of taking the challenge away from myself, uh, let me tell you how Ring Fit Adventure plays. There's the titular ring that you can stretch or push and is used for the bulk of Ring Fit's upper body and arm exercises. It's a solid tool that can handle a surprising amount of force. Or 
at least enough that like I can physically give it. The other one is the leg strap, which is you just attach it to your leg and it measures all the leg related things. The ring con is good at doing its job, but it became very clear to me how easy it is to exploit the leg joy con. It only actually ever monitors the one leg it's on, which should be your left leg from what it tells me. You can just be a morally upstanding person and do both, even though it's only measuring one. Or you can just really work out your left leg and let your right leg just sit there balancing you or whatever else you feel like doing it. I unintentionally discovered this because I just couldn't do all of the required planks it wanted me to do. I was like, what if I just fall to the ground and then I started moving my leg and it registered it and I went, oh, I can just do one leg, that's fine. I wasn't actively trying to game the system, I just uh, was tired, so I cheated, if you want to look at it that way. But once this knowledge came into my being, it became a crutch of sorts whenever I really needed it. I did try to do things earnestly, or at least correctly, by the game standards. I don't think I actually did any of them correctly. But the game registered is that I did, so that's all I really care about. Either way, I look goofy doing all of them, but the game says it's fine, so it's fine. Either way, I gotta give it the old college try. I do at least have a sense of integrity, but again, I'm also just fully willing to compromise this challenge a bit so that I don't have to suffer. The last thing I want to mention about the game mechanics is a neat little visual the game focuses on. When you're doing the exercise well enough, it ignites the muscle area in flames. Which, aside from my innate edgy boy fire tendencies, it's also just a really cool design choice. It makes me feel like I'm really working hard and doing the exercise right and getting the muscle group done correctly. I think that's how that works. Even if I'm probably actually doing it entirely wrong, the game's telling me I'm doing it right, and their butt's on fire, which is just funny. The first week of this challenge was just me getting used to the game. It's just me pulling up in some baggy sweatpants, a random anime t-shirt, and maybe some socks if I wasn't doing laundry at the same time. A fun fact of this challenge is I recorded it all except without audio because I live with other people and am simply too self-conscious to make them aware I'm exercising. A sizable part of why I've never gone to an actual gym and worked out in that way was because I just don't want to be seen exercising poorly. Even if no one cares, my excessive self-obsession does. You're probably asking why I recorded it then. Well, uh, it's content, and also, a camera doesn't care what I look like. Anything that I draw from that is just me projecting. Like how I think every single one of these, I look incredibly awkward in them, but... Anyways. Doing these exercises without audio was just a fun exercise in uh, using hand signals to communicate. It was also very nice that I could do laundry in the meantime which was useful because most of my days are spent doing several different things at once. I'm doing school work while I have laundry going in the machine right behind me. I'm trying to write a video while laundry's going right behind me or there's eight different people upstairs doing things. As you can see from the environment I'm working in, uh, it's very small. A lot of it is just making do with what I have in the environment that I have around me, which is not a lot of space. The wall is about that far, and this is right here. Not e I can't even fully extend my arm. But it's what I got, because right now I just hide in my parents' basement because I don't have to pay rent, so I can pay student loans off. I live in a state where it's too expensive for me to live on my own. I don't have a large enough social circle to build enough people to live anywhere else. And also, I'm in job searching hell, so nothing is going great here, but we're here today. Anyways, even if I didn't do it here, I have a very small house that I'm in, so I carved out my little area, and I did the best I could. I also just didn't record audio because I was too busy gasping for air to make entertaining commentary. I'm a skinny guy who's out of shape. I'm just trying to finish the challenge without dying. 
But back to the game, after about six days, I finally decided to play a story of the game, and I very quickly realized that it is boring as hell. Calling it Paper Thin would be mean to other games, but uh, it does have a story. Your character and the Mr. Ring guy have to suck Dragux. I don't know how to say his name, that's just how I'm assuming it is. This buff looking demon guy from destroying the world. I don't like Dragox. His vibe is off, and I don't respect it. The rest of the game is running and doing the same exercises until the enemy dies. Which got repetitive after I realized I can only physically manage about three-fourths of the ones they give you to start. I tried squats once, and I almost fell over and just broke all of my legs. So instead I just do the arm press into chair pose, which was miserable in its own way, which is more, it's just boring. But I'd rather boring over, I feel like I'm going to collapse, I need to not do this. But beyond that, it's just a very repetitive game. At least from what I've played, because I didn't actually beat the story for the challenge, because I had no interest in doing it. But the main story and some of the side modes also have this fun little stopwatch in the corner of the screen. I was going to base my exercise time for the day off of this, but it only measures active time, so it only adds time when I'm actually doing exercise, which is fair, but feels kind of cruel. The first day I did the story, I was playing the game for about 40 minutes, and about 16 and a half of them were actually exercise, which is a good amount of exercise in my opinion, but uh, for a video game, it feels like I should be spending more time playing the game and not reading cutscenes for a story I don't care about. But some of that was also just I needed to gasp for air or sit down and recover for 30 seconds before I died. But I did beat the first world of the game, which was nice. Don't get used to that. I don't do it again. The first week ended on a rest day. I had just come off of several brutal work shifts in a row, and I don't think I could have mustered the energy to move even if I could have exercised. So I rested to not break my fragile ego and my fragile body. Anyway, here's me looking goofy. Week 2 was where I solidified the areas I wanted to work out more, which was to some degree the sets that I knew I could manage on the hardcore difficulty without wanting to die. I also decided to start doing this random ring prex exercise just to see how high I could go, but I only got to like the upper hundreds and I don't know if that's good or not, even though it says S. For the sets I just focus on the shoulders, arm, and abs mostly because the first two I knew I could manage doing multiple of them if I was really feeling like a champ for that day. The abs were the hardest for me to do, but I am a simple man who really only understands exercise is trying to get ripped arms and a six pack, which is probably very simple minded, but um, whatever works is I guess enough. The rest of the week was just working on those sets besides the one day I did a singular level of the main story at like 9pm after work and just wanted to die the entire time. The fit battles don't really bother me, but the jogging and the various ways they spice that section up with things like high knees or squats did me in. I just could not do it. I never felt like I was going fast enough. I just felt like I was expending way too much energy for trekking through the mud that, as a human being, I would just simply go around. The end of week two was met with the announcement from my family that we were going on a family vacation for almost a week which lined up with the first week of Barbie and Oppenheimer's release, which was going to be hell at work. It was. And it was nice to not have to work during the weekdays of that, but it also presented a challenge for me. Uh, I don't have the ability to play Ring Fit on that trip. I was staying for less days, so I didn't feel bad about leaving at the busiest time of the year. So I packed very light. I didn't intend on even bringing my Switch, so I could just get in and out of security in an instant. As I was leaving, I decided I'll bring it, which turned out to be a very good idea, but that's unrelated to this. Either way, I sat in my chair and I tried to brainstorm ways to keep the challenge intact while I didn't have access to Ring Fit. I thought about just doing the exercise from a YouTube video or something, or booting up Wii Fit videos and just pretending I was doing them along with the YouTube video. 
but I also realized all of these were a dumb idea because there's no way to prove I was actually doing it right. I could just be doing it horribly wrong and hurting myself more than I was helping. And also, at its core, this challenge is just to exercise more. I was just trying to be more physically active in my life in general, which doesn't necessarily mean I need to play Ring Fit Adventure every day, and there probably are better things I could be doing. So after I did a week of sets to think, I decided I'll just go touch grass every day. And I went on my trip, and I sure touched some grass. I walked, like, every day. I took very few pictures of it, or very few video, because I was not thinking about it. The first day, I went to a playground with my niece and a bunch of my family, only to find it was closed to the public because they had childcare still going on. Uh, the next day, we went to the Bronner's Christmas store for some reason, and it was a miserable two hours for me specifically, because I have no interest in spending time at a Christmas store in the middle of July. Even if it is exactly Christmas in July, because it was July 25th, uh, they weren't doing anything special for it. It was just me wandering around in circles while my family was doing things. But then we went to Frankenmuth and explored, and I got some good walking in there. I only have a single picture from this, which was just me looking at a mirrored light area thing that I thought looked cool. And that was that day. The next day it was just a normal day. I went to a zoo in Ohio with some of my family. I took pictures of the little fishies and some of the animals. And then a storm hit and I got stuck in an aquarium for an hour. I just parked myself on a ledge with this big guy and his friends swimming all around me. And after the storm moved on enough, we went through the rest of the zoo. I have plenty of pictures of the aquarium. I have exactly one of anything after that, which is just this frog who was just vibing the whole time because they had an exhibit where the frogs were just roaming. And I was like, that's a vibe. Just let these little guys go, which is a cool idea for an exhibit. But I was very scared I was going to accidentally kill a frog, which made me a little uncomfy. But I do like it more than the ones they do with butterflies and stuff because I think those are gross and they make me very scared. We returned to the lake house we were staying at to see a truly wonderful sight. We had a uh, no power and weren't expected to get any back for several days. As the last day arrived, we went to a state park to wander around the beach. The storm had passed and the beach was peaceful enough. So let's take a pause while you listen to some waves crossing the shore. <laughs> The rest of my day was spent at the airport flying home to go back to work the next day. My flight got delayed several times because that happens every time I fly now, and was also the worst looking plane I've ever been on. I usually fly on Southwest because it's what my family usually does and I've just come to accept this habit, but I was on JetBlue this time. And I had a great time watching the little displays flicker and look barely functional. And I also had, like, water droplets randomly fall on me. So I had my rain jacket on, and I just put my hood up and went to sleep for, like, an hour. But I made it home, and while waiting for the bus to get picked up, I was immediately hit with another storm, and it was bad. Granted, I knew it was coming because the instant I stepped out of the terminal to wait at the bus stop, I could feel the humidity on my skin... But then the thunder and lightning rolled in alongside several minutes of downpouring, so uh, here's that for you so you can watch it. After returning home to not abandon my suffering coworkers, I only had like a day or two left of the challenge. I spent them just doing sets or saying I worked eight hours a day with exercise as I had been doing before. But all the while I had an idea looming in my head, which was to stream the last day of Ring Fit and try to make up for all the days of it that I missed. So on July 31st, I booted up a stream with a demonstrably worse mic that had the ability to pick up me halfway across the room. And I decided to exercise for an hour.
My original goal was to do that hour by ring fit standards, but I quickly realized that was uh, not physically possible for me and my body. I did a few more levels of the game, beat Dragox one more time, and ended with a grand total of just over 50, 25 minutes of purely exercise according to Rink Fit Adventure standards. 10 more minutes than the first time I did it, but it felt like so much more. It was enough that I had to take a break during it to recover some of my willpower and gain a second wind. A second wind. No, I don't miss like wind. It didn't last long, but for those few seconds it felt very good. And with that, I finished the challenge. Honestly, this challenge felt largely inoffensive. I can't physically tell if I've gotten any more in shape than I was before. I know I've worked out a few more muscle groups than usual, but I could never tell if I was just sore from work or sore from ring fit, which is probably more of work, but it could be both, if I'm being honest. I think a challenge like this was necessary, but it also made me realize that work takes too much energy out of me. So many days were just battles of willpower to get myself to do a singular set of ring fit after a shift at work. I was exhausted, but I still needed to do it. And for the most part, I did, which I'm glad. I'm glad I stuck it through, but it was still very rough. The problem is I work odd hours, so I could never get into a consistent routine for exercising. It was just whenever I could find the time to do so, whether that be at 11 a.m. or 10 p.m. And I'm sure that's how it is for many other people, but if I wasn't doing this for a video, I probably would have just not bothered doing it at all. I was doing it partially for the content, but I also knew that guys would make me marginally more motivated to do it. It's a weirdly effective way to get me to do something, but whatever works. Because here I am a month later, having basically finished the challenge. And entirely unrelated to this, a few minutes after I had finished the last stream, I streamed myself finishing a Pokemon Emerald Rogue Run, which was the first one I ever beat. Let's go! We finally did it. We finally beat the Pokemon Emerald Rogue Run. And I was way more excited for that victory than the entirety of this challenge. Anyways, I have no idea what I'm going to spend the next month doing a challenge for, but it'll crystallize soon enough, I imagine. So in a month's time, it'll be more than that, more than likely. You'll see what other random thing I decided to invest some time into for little to no actual benefit.